Today I'm going to talk about colour space and which is the best one, sRGB, Adobe RGB or Pro Photo RGB. Colour space in photography can be really confusing and there is a lot of conflicting information online. But if you understand how it works, you can make better decisions in what to use or what not to use depending on what you intend on doing with your images. There are so many different colour profiles and if you look at your computer display settings, you can pick from so many different ones. But for photography, all you need to know about is sRGB, Adobe RGB 98 and Pro Photo RGB. These are set as standards, so from the camera taking a photograph through to editing and printing, you will, in theory, get the same colour. And by using certain colour spaces, you can get your computer to make mathematical calculations so it keeps the colours the same and consistent throughout the whole of your workflow. Basically, your eyes can see a whole range of colours, of which the current estimate is between 2 and 8 million colours. Now, there is a mathematical equation that maps all of these colours into one model, and it's called the LAB model, or the lab model. It is a three-dimensional model, but a lot of the times it's just shown as a two-dimensional model, like this. L is for lightness, A is for your green to red colours, and B is for your blue to yellow colours. When it comes to your photography workflow, there are two different color models, RGB and CMYK. RGB is red, green, and blue. It's an additive model and is used for monitors, scanners, cameras, and any kind of displays. CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This is a subtractive model and is used for printing, whether it's an inkjet printer or a press. RGB is additive because you start with zero, which is black, and go to 255 to get white. So you add a numerical figure to go through the colors from black to white. Whereas with the CMYK, it's subtractive. Black is at 100% or the highest number, and you subtract numbers to move through to white. So white is at 0% and black is at 100%. And if you think about the printing process, this makes sense. You start with a white blank page. Now we won't talk about printing on different color paper for now, just white. So with no colors added, it's a white page. And then the more colors you add, the darker it gets. So all the inkjet has to do is add more color of each of the C, M and Y to get the color needed for that location in your image. So with RGB, higher numbers equal brighter colors. And with CMYK, lower numbers equal brighter colors. Now in theory, looking at the color charts, CMYK should only be CMY, which is cyan, magenta, and yellow. And when you mix them all together at 255 parts, it should give you black. On screen it does, but in reality when printing, it gives you a dark brown color. Because of this, they have added black ink to this range. So when printing, it just uses black ink instead of all three colors. Now, instead of adding B to the acronym, which people could mistake for blue, they've added K, the last letter in black. So there's no confusion, hence CMYK. So with the lab color model, we need to get profiles from this that will enable us to go from the RGB color model to the CMYK color model without losing or gaining any colors. Now for this, we need some kind of standardization. The ICC is the International Colour Consortium, and on their website it says, the purpose of the ICC is to promote the use and adoption of open, vendor-neutral, cross-platform colour management systems. This basically means that they have profiles to standardise colours, so from one product to another, you can get consistency in your colours. There is a lot more to it than that, but once you understand the basics, you can understand which color space to use. Now your computer color engine, be it Adobe Photoshop or Capture One or whatever software you use, has this lab color model to work from. When you take a photo and import it into your computer, the RGB camera values in that image will go through the input profile to give the computer the corresponding lab values. So the computer knows exactly where these colors sit on the lab model. Then to display them on your monitor, it takes these lab values and converts them back to RGB values for your monitor 
through the display profile. And 99% of the time, if your monitor is not too old or worn out, it should do a pretty good job. On the other hand, if you're sending it straight to print, it will take the RGB values and make the corresponding lab values. Then from those lab values, it'll use the output profile to get the corresponding CMYK values for your printing device. Now on top of all that, different types of paper will be able to display different levels of color. And this is why it's good to tell the computer what type of paper you are using so it can tell the printer what it needs to do to replicate the colors accurately. You're probably half asleep now and wondering what does this actually mean in real terms for my workflow? Well, to start with, it depends on what file your camera is producing. If you are shooting in JPEG only, the color space will be embedded into your image as you take it. And this is why you have the choice between sRGB or Adobe RGB in your camera. Whereas if you are shooting RAW, it will have a much wider color range stored in the RAW file. So I'm gonna test this out and show you what I found in going through my whole workflow. As the differences between the color spaces are on the saturated ends, so let's say for Pro Photo RGB, it's got a much wider profile, and especially in the greens and the reds. Because of this, I've grabbed a few bright objects from around my apartment, and as you can see, I've really worked on the composition of this shot. I've taken the photos in both RAW and JPEG and in both sRGB and Adobe RGB. With the previews on the back of the camera, there is a subtle difference between the two different color spaces, especially in the saturated colors. The first thing that you'll notice is that the camera might label them differently. With the Sony cameras, if you shoot with Adobe RGB, it puts an underscore at the start of the name and drops a figure in the name as well. So straight away, you can see that with the save files, they are different. Then when you're importing the image, the small thumbnails of the Adobe RGB look darker in the import preview page. And this includes the raw files. This figures as these are the JPEG preview images. When you bring them into Lightroom, once it has loaded up the previews, the raw files are exactly the same, whereas the JPEGs aren't. The Adobe image has slightly brighter highlights and darker shadows, but it is subtle. So this shows that the raw files retain all of the information from the sensor, whereas the JPEGs use those smaller color space profiles of sRGB or Adobe RGB. And this is why you don't have to worry about this setting in your camera when you're shooting RAW. So the color space does make a difference if you are shooting in JPEG. But if you are this picky about how your images look, you really should be shooting in RAW and should learn how to do it if you don't know how to yet. This will give you the most detail and the best quality out of your camera possible. When you shoot in RAW, what you're basically doing is getting the camera just to take that RAW data and then you're editing it afterwards. Whereas when you've got the camera to save JPEGs, what it will do is take the shot and from that raw image, it will create its own image of what it thinks it should look like. So when you shoot raw, you get to make the editing choices, not the camera. And this means you can make the image look so much better. Now, if you do insist on shooting JPEGs, I'd keep it in sRGB for any web-based applications and Adobe RGB for printing. If you have a look around in some of the settings in Lightroom, it's really hard to find anything on color space. The only place I could find it is in preferences and external editing. In here, you can see when you edit in Photoshop or whichever external editor you choose, you pick the color space. If you choose anything other than Pro Photo RGB, it pops up the message the color space cannot encompass the full range of colors available within Lightroom. But in reality, this doesn't really change much in how the photo looks. I imported four of the same images with different profiles from Lightroom to Photoshop, and it didn't look any different. Now, if you do a really aggressive edit on your photo, you may notice the difference with these different color spaces. But what I'd suggest is to do what the program tells you and keep this in Pro Photo RGB, because that's what it's been designed for. So if I do a round trip to Photoshop and back with no editing in Photoshop, even though the Pro Photo RGB color space was assigned in the round trip, it looks exactly the same as before I started the round trip. So for me, this is evidence that nothing has really changed in the round trip and it converts it successfully. So 
I would keep it in Profoto RGB and I wouldn't worry too much about it at this stage. In reality, if you do all of your editing in Lightroom, the only real time you'll come across the color space profiles is on export. Now, if I export three different images in sRGB, Adobe RGB, and then Profoto RGB, the image doesn't change at all. And this has pretty bright, vivid colors in the shot. So Lightroom does a good job at converting the color space. Next, I'll try the JPEG images. First, the sRGB. I'll try exporting this with a Profoto RGB color space, then with an sRGB color space. Again, I can't see any difference whatsoever between the two. And looking at them side by side, it's hard to see any differences. One thing I would say is that if you are exporting for use online, just keep this to sRGB, as that is what most web browsers and apps use. Now I'm gonna head back over to Photoshop. I'll import an image and then go to Edit, Convert to Profile and change it to any profile. Now this doesn't seem to make any changes to how the image looks. Now this doesn't seem to make any changes to how the image looks and side by side, I can't see any difference at all. The only way I could get images to look very different was to do this. I would get them into Photoshop, then go to edit and assign profile. Now if I change the assigned profile from what the image was, then I get drastic changes. As you can see here, this is a Profoto RGB image and I've assigned it with an sRGB profile and it looks really dull. And this is an sRGB image with an Adobe RGB assigned profile and it looks unnaturally vivid. So you can see if you assign the wrong profile to your image, it can look really strange. Also in Photoshop, if you use the save for web option or the export option, you can produce some pretty different results here as well. Once in this window, change the image type to JPEG, and then you'll see this convert to sRGB checkbox, and then the preview option. If I uncheck the convert to sRGB, the image goes drab and it looks pretty horrible. But if I do this and change the preview to use document profile, once again, there doesn't seem to be any change. However, if you have these two settings on like I have now, and you were to export this, you would get this dull looking image once again. So from the preview image to the exported image, this would produce really different results. And I could see how frustrating this might be. Now, if you've done this to your images, you don't really need to worry because the colors are still there. What you wanna do is bring it back into Photoshop and you can see it still looks different. However, if I look to see what profile it has by clicking on this little tag down here and clicking on document profile, I can see that it has an RGB unassigned tag. So your computer doesn't know which RGB tag to put on this image. And that is why it looks very drab and it doesn't have much color to it. And this is where the assign option comes into play. I know it was a Profoto RGB image, so when I assign it to that profile, it goes back to what it was. So you can see all of the colors were there. The computer just didn't know what RGB profile to put on the image. Now I know I went off on a bit of a tangent there, but there is so much to learn about this. So if you are using the save for web function or the export as function, just keep convert to sRGB checked. This is because sRGB is used by most web browsers and apps. So you want to be in the same profile and same color space as those web browsers so the colors look exactly the same. And then you want to keep this preview box to monitor color. Then what you see in the preview is what you'll get when you export the image. Another way you might get different results when saving from Photoshop is if you are editing the image in a Profoto RGB or an Adobe RGB color space, and then you go to save as. Change the type to JPEG and uncheck the embedded color profile option. If you do this, it will save the image as an unassigned RGB image. And this will give you a really drab, dull looking image. Again, all you need to do is bring that image back into Photoshop and then go to assign profile and assign it the correct RGB profile that it had originally. So you can see there's so many ways you can get tripped up. There's so many ways you can mismatch and get all of the colors a little bit wrong. So in your workflow, 
They go from being great, and in the editing program they look great, going right through to when you export, and they look a little bit less than great. After doing all of these tests, I realized one thing. sRGB is a really good color space. You can get really bright colors with it, and most displays, scanners, printers, photo paper qualities, websites, and apps all use this to reproduce the same color time and time again. And unless you know exactly what you're doing, are a professional printer, or own your own printing house and know exactly what does what, my advice would be not to worry about it at all and leave everything alone. They put these settings in the programs for a reason, so just keep them where they are. Now, if you're getting inconsistent results on export, somewhere along your workflow, you're assigning or mismatching profiles to your images, or you're exporting them as Adobe RGB or ProPhoto RGB images before uploading them to an sRGB platform. The way I look at it is if you want top quality images, you want to be shooting in RAW. The programs and editing software do an amazing job of keeping the colors the same from device to device. If you're exporting for the web, make sure you export in sRGB out of Lightroom and this will keep the same colors. If you prefer to edit in Photoshop, keep an eye on the colors on export. And if you're saving for social media or any kind of web use, use the export or save for web function. Then all you do is make sure convert to sRGB is checked. And if you prefer to use the save as function, make sure to keep the embedded color profile option checked. Now, if you are using the save as function, I'd make sure to convert the image before. And you do this by clicking on edit, convert to profile and select the sRGB color space. This will mean it's in the right color space for when you upload it online and you're not gonna get a mismatch when uploading it. Now, I prefer to use the export function as this does give consistent results in Photoshop. But for most of my images, I will round trip them from Lightroom to Photoshop and back again. And this does really give me consistent results. Now, one thing I haven't spoken about too much is printing. If you are printing, I'd suggest doing loads of test prints before printing the final image or ask the print house to do that as well, so you can see how their printer works from your monitor. It may also be wise to ask the print house what color space they want the images in. If they do want it in a different profile to what you've got, go into Photoshop, click on Edit, Convert to Profile. So you're gonna convert it, and you're not gonna assign a profile to it. So if you convert the profile, it'll look the same, but it'll be in the right color space for the print house. One other thing, if you're printing a lot of images, it's definitely worth calibrating your screen to make sure your screen is closer to what your printer might produce. But do keep test printing before setting yourself any major print jobs. Now this will mean that you'll get consistent results from your screen to your printer. The last thing you want is to have the image looking great on screen and then looking really bad when you print it. So test print time and time again. Now, what are your experiences with color spaces? Have you found anything different to what I have or have you found a similar thing? Let me know in the comments below because it'll be great to hear your thoughts on this. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and try clicking on this next video to learn about the signal to noise ratios or click on this next video down here to learn about using a 10 stop ND filter. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for photography tutorials and reviews every Monday and Thursday. I'll see you next time.